live and in person. It is their turn. Enjoy this game. Jamie we'll keep you Moore. up to date on what's happening with the Brewers and Diamondbacks throughout. Carl, see ya. Nicole, thank you very much. And farmer Jamie Moyer is the man that is on the mound tonight. And he will throw out the ceremonial first pitch. Last night, the place went crazy. Reese Hoskins did it. Now it's Jamie Moyer, one of the heroes from the 2008 World Series team, traded over from Seattle. And all he did was stay for a couple of years and delivered that type of pitch, which seemingly was impossible to hit. This bank is open late. They encourage you to wave red towels and be as loud as you can. We are set for game two. Wild card, Phillies, Marlins. The time for improving is over. The time for proving has arrived. Because the future hangs by a thread. It's gone! The Marlins and the Phillies are ready. Harper being held. He runs through that side. And he's safe. And the Phillies will win game one, four to one. This moment. Filled with promise or regret. is here. Now is all they got. Is your shot. Who is ready for a Wednesday night party? Baseball style, game two, best of three, National League wild card series. The Philadelphia Phillies and the Miami Marlins. And rinse and repeat, they are ready to rock again. This ballpark has been very friendly to the Phillies. 23 and 11 in the postseason at this ballpark. That's a 676 winning percentage. They win tonight. They move on to face the Atlanta Braves. The Marlins win, and we will have a game three. Miami 4 and 1 when facing elimination in their postseason history. Philadelphia looking for their 14th win. In a game, they have a chance to clinch it. Welcome. We'll hear from Buster only in just a little bit. David Cohn, Eduardo Perez, I'm Carl Ravitch. It went just about as well as it could have for the Phillies last night. Different pitchers on the mound. We'll talk about them in a moment. But not only did the stars shine, the entire offense clicked in. They really did. And just like the energy that the fans had before the game and they have again today, that's the energy that this team had. They kept the line moving. They weren't trying to hit home runs, so they didn't hit home runs. They were applying pressure. They were taking long at bats. And most importantly, they none of them wanted to be the hero. They just wanted to put pressure on the Marlins. They were able to be successful. And that's why every starter that started the game, and I repeat, every starter that started the game with ended the game, all of them not only got the first, but yeah. they got the second base. The Philadelphia Phillies put the pressure from first pitch to the last pitch. Now on the other end, you have the Miami Marlins. What do they have to do? It's simple. They have to outslug this team. And it all starts with their number two and four hole hitter, and that's Jazz Chisholm Jr. and Jorge Soler. Yesterday, five strikeouts, 0 for 8. That has to change if they want to play tomorrow. Skip Schumacher is the manager of the Marlins. He went back, and he does it every day, watches the game from the night before, and he came up with the conclusion. I'm not sure anybody was hitting Wheeler last night. Nola on the mound against Braxton Garrett this evening. Two guys that aren't going to throw 100, but they'll likely keep you in the game. Yeah, we're going from the gas to the paint tonight. Right, both, right. both guys throw strikes. Uh, Nola's battle-tested. I mean, you've, a former number one pick, you talk about a guy who's come through for them in a lot of ways. That's what every organization wishes when you pick a pitcher number one. All of his postseason experience came last year. It was good early. Finished not so great in the last two starts, but he's been much better in September, and he's well-rested coming into this. And then, of course, Braxton Garrett, the young lefty, also very good control. His 5.38 strikeout to walk ratio is third in the National League this year. Only 29 walks on the year. But this will be his first test in postseason on the road in Philly. That's a different animal. It is a different animal, but good things happen for the Marlins. When he's on the mound, he has started 30 games, and the team has won 21 of those. 
Castellanos and company get set to deal with Jazz, the alien. We're going to be on the ground for takeoff. Welcome back. Before the first pitch, we send it down to Buster. And I'm here with Kyle Schwarber, the Phillies. Last year, you guys made a run from the wild card round to the World Series. What feels different and the same this year compared to last year? All right, man, you know, I think you got the same atmosphere. Um, obviously, a different team. Uh, we have the experience and uh, made a lot of key additions uh, to the team. So, uh, you know, take it a day, take it a pitch at a time. You know, great opportunity ahead of us tonight to, uh, to uh, try to do this. But obviously, it's a great team across the way, so not taken lightly at all. Nick Castellanos gave you guys the ring finger from second base last night. What'd you think when you saw that? <laughs> Just making sure he didn't flip us off in the moment. But uh, you know, heck, you know, that, that's what we want to play for. And uh, you know, we got to take it step by step. But that's the ultimate goal is to get there and uh, try to win it all. But you know, like I said, tonight's going to be a great test. Kyle, thanks. Right. Carl, back to you. Hi, right, Buster. Thanks. Yeah, he wasn't the only one. Nick was asked after, like, what was that? Did you did you flip them off? And he said, no, why would I do that? I love those guys. Aaron Nola is going to deal with Luis Arise, the back to back batting champ, American and now National League. Solaire Bell, who had a big night last night, Jazz Chisholm Jr., then Jake Berger. It was Bell and Berger that were acquired by Kim Ang, and it really turned the offense around. And Jacob Stallings is going to be catching tonight. Game plan for Aaron Nola is going to be what? Well, he's well rested. We've talked about his alignment, a little mechanical adjustment. He's landing in more of a direct line to home plate. That's got his breaking ball back on top. His two seamers zooming now. So we look for him to be well rested and ready to go. 30 year old Aaron Nola pitching for a lot. He's a free agent at the end of this year. He tipped his cap when he came off the field during his last regular season start. So he pitches with a lot of emotion. There's a lot of energy, and his last two starts were terrific. He struck out 16. Arai steps in. We're set to start game two with the Phillies up one game to none. Oh, it's off. Ball one from Nola. Eight days since his last start. 0 and 1 with a 547 in his last five games. That's a good breaking ball in there for a strike. Nola has been inconsistent all year, and he has said late in the season, the problem has been he goes to the mound having three, four, maybe five pitches, but most of the time only two have been working. And Arai slaps one to left field, and Pache has to go back to make the play. Game starts just like it did last night with Pache making a catch off a rise. One thing the Phillies do well is catch the ball in the outfield. They run it down, led by Josh Rojas in center field, but Pache, an original center fielder playing the corners, legitimately you have two center fielders out there that can cover some serious ground. Same lineup as last night defensively for the Philadelphia Phillies. And here comes Jorge Soler. Ball. Pitch too far inside. One ball, no strike. Soler having a massive season, 36 home runs. You see the OPS plus at 128. Had no bleak strain late in September, went on the IL. Watches that one go in there for a strike. Jorge Soler has to be the silencer here. The crowd on their feet needs to be able to barrel something and quiet them down early. Foul ball. We've seen a knuckle curve. We've seen that two seamer from Nola so far. Soler has had some magical postseasons, and most recently, of course, when he was with the Braves and was their MVP. 21% of the team's home runs come from this guy. You're starting to see that 95 too. Is that a product of the rest? I believe so, especially with veteran pitchers. I thought it was a, a great idea for Rob Thompson and, and the organization to, to sort of plan it out over the last month. Recovery time for veteran pitchers is so important. Ball, that's off. Off 
to play two and two. You're right. That game plan for October started in early August. Trying to allow the starters six days. Went to a six man rotation. And then the schedule allowed them to continue that. Got him there. Nola with a terrific off speed knuckle curve. Just great finish to that curveball. And we saw Wheeler last night with his best stuff of the year. So far, so good for Nola, who is working actually this year five straight 200 strikeout seasons, yep. discounting 2020, second only to Steve Carlton in franchise history. Now they're booing Bell, which means he must have had a good night last night, and he did. Went three for four with a couple of doubles. That pitch looked low, but he gets the strike call. Doug Eddings is a pitcher friendly umpire. Oh, that's down. Maybe now we know the line. <laughs> yes. Well, we saw some low ones last night. Yeah, we sure did. But as Skip Schubacher said, when he watched the game again, both teams. Yes, both ways. 1 1 to Bell. Swings right past that. 87 mile an hour changeup. So would you say that three pitches are working early? Great sign early on for Nola. You get reduced to a two pitch mix, then he gets into search mode. If he's got that changeup, especially for lefties, that's an equalizer. Typical of the at bats that Josh was taking yesterday, right? Working the count deep. Gets a 2 2, sometimes 3 2, and then finds Barrel. Stays alive. Fouls that one off. Yeah. Mentioned the Phillies' record in the elimination games. Two of their losses in elimination games came back in 2011. Skip Schumacher's Cardinals. So he knows what this environment is like, and you see Nola and how things improve dramatically with a slight tweak to his delivery. Got Bell, what a start for Nola. He gets Solaire and Josh Bell. The Phillies to the plate for the first time. Now one of the game plans the teams will try to employ against the Phillies when available throw a left hander against them. They're doing that tonight. But the Phillies the lefties in the lineup have hit 30 homers off left handed pitchers which is the most of any club. And they tend to be patient too as lefty on lefty with a lot of walks 92 times against lefties first in baseball. So that means guys like Schwarber and Harper. Fred Turner had a good night last night. Pache and Rojas delivered at the bottom. Now here comes the biggest test of this kid's life. Braxton Garrett who has been up to every challenge. He started the season in the pen. Made one relief appearance got sent down. Then he came back when Cueto wasn't available and he's been there ever since. Ninety two to start Schwarber. From gas to paint. Yep. Two left handed starters for the Marlins. Down same defensive alignment with the exception of Stallings behind the plate. Berger at third, Birdie at short, Arise at second, and Bell is at first with De La Cruz, Chisholm, and Sanchez left to right in the outfield. Ball. He missed badly there. Two balls and a strike to Schorber, who will be followed by Turner and Alec Bone. Ball, that's all. 126 walks this season, a career high for Schwarber. Now hitters count. Two! Gets the call. And now Schwarber calls timeout. Impressive. Right on the edge, does not give in to a home run hitter early in this game. Kyle's nemesis has been mostly the slider, both against righties and lefties. The fastball 
Right or left, it does not matter to him. Got him. What a job there by Braxton Garrett. Falling behind 3-1, striking out Schwarber. Should I finish that sentence? Unless it's elevated like that, right? 92 miles per hour, take out this view. Won every corner on him. 3-1 outside corner, and this time changes eye level and just elevates. Hey! Strike one to Turner. Turner stole two more bases last night. Ball oh, that's in. One miss just in. So you go back to last year as Sarah Langs points out to everybody on her X account. 38 straight stolen bases without getting caught. You're going to see a little different repertoire against right handed batters from Garrett. More of a kitchen sink approach. He's got a, a cut fastball that Mel Stoudemire Jr. taught him that he uses to get inside. To right, he's got more of a changeup. Predominantly sinker slider to lefties. Turner has two home runs against Garrett. And in fact, there's a handful of Phillies that have had some good success against him. Turner with the two homers. Bones really had success. Five for nine with a homer. Real Mutos taking him deep. Braxton Garrett was a terrific high school pitcher and really had mastered the curveball. The curveball has been used a lot less now that he's in professional baseball. Changed his arm slot a few years ago and he really took off from there. Turner tried to check but he fouled it off. And you showed those numbers there. I guarantee you everyone in that lineup knows the success that they've had against Garrett. Not only do they know the most likely video has been replaying in that clubhouse of their success. 2 2. Got him there. What a start. We saw the fastball, and now we see a wicked slider. Good vertical action on that slider. It really goes down about 4.6 inches more than average compared to other major league sliders of similar velocity. So that's above average. And one of the stars of the regular season here is Alec Bohm. Swings at the first one, pops it up. Birdie goes back, and he is under it to make the play. And for any anxiety or nerves, that 3-1 count to Schwarber came back, struck him out, and after that, locked and loaded. Gets Turner and Bone. Well, he was just a babyface kid out of LSU, Aaron Nola, when he joined the Phillies. He's known no other organization. And he has been reliable. He's been consistent. He's put up innings. He's put up strikeouts. And now he's trying to put up a win here in the wild card in what may be his final season. There's uncertainty about whether the Phillies want to bring him back, whether he wants to come back. But he has been great. You see the opponent's batting average, all time Philly ranks. He's first, 231. There have been some great pitchers in Philadelphia. Yes, there has. It's a, a storied franchise that's been around for a long time. He's top 10 in most categories, top five in a lot. Inside the Beltway, most Phillies fans know that Nola tends to, and of course the Louisiana background loves to pitch when it's warmer. It's 73 degrees here. It's a beautiful night. As Chisholm swings at the first one. So Lair struck out. Eddie also identified this guy, Chisholm, who's just got all sorts of skills as the other one that's got to get going. 0 for 4, 2 Ks in game one. A slow roller is going to be a tough play. It is picked up, and Harper steps on the bag to beat Chisholm. I must admit, the more I have seen Bryce Harper play first base, it seems like he's been there for a long time. Playing there, getting ready for that shot, comes in, reads the bounce. Communicates with Nolan. Sometimes those are the tough ones, the in betweeners. Pass or not, worked hard at it. And I was talking about it with Bryce today, and he talked about how much he loved it. And let's face it, guys, I mean, he grew up as an amateur, as a catcher, so he loves the action of the infield. 
Next up for the Marlins, Jake Berger, the third baseman. Break on it from Aaron Nola. The knuckle curve has been effective to get ahead of Berger, who had nine homers with the Marlins, 25 with the White Sox, 34 on the season. And a terrific acquisition by Kim Ng. Round of third, two hopper for Bone. He gets him by half a step. You know you have to be ready playing third base with Nola on the mound because of those two seamers in to righties all night long. Curve balls and two seamers. This is two seamer in. You can see he just beats it in the ground. It's also knowing your runner as well, taking your time, understanding it's not a speedster getting down that line. Left fielder Brian De La Cruz. Ball, that's all. Hazel and love that. That's ball one. De La Cruz and Sanchez, the left fielder and right fielder, have been revelations and made Skip Schumacher's life a lot easier this year. They have been terrific. He's got a little bit too much of that. They'll work on it. 142 strikeouts this season. He's got one thing in mind when he turns it loose, Eduardo. He's trying to leave. A big swing. 19 homers on the season, Cody. He's got a homer against Nola, four for 13 in his career against him. Ball. Stays away there, two balls and a strike. Three balls and a strike. It's a really good take. Mm -hmm. You're thinking right there, 2 1. Fastball ready to hunt. Recognized the spin and laid off it. Challenged him and he hits this one high and deep to left field. Pache is back there. He's on the track. He is there to make the play. He swings for the fences and nearly got it there. The changeup got him. Six up, six down for Nola to start. Been in the batter's box for the first time tonight. When he shows up, he uh, shows up in style. Practice. Practice. Allen Iverson t-shirt. And then tonight, so yesterday Iverson, tonight black on black overalls. And he'll throw in a Trey Turner t-shirt for warm-ups on the field. Garrett behind one zip as he misses with the first. Big swing from Harper on a fastball up at 93. Sneaky quick, right? From, from Garrett. Ball, that's all. Tell you what, so far, two totally different pitchers. Nola's pitched down in the zone effectively, and it's been Garrett that's been pitching up, especially with the fastball effectively. So far, to the three three hitters he's faced. Well, this was last night. You talk about aggressive base running from the Phillies. How about this from Bryce Harper? He gets its hold sign, but you're your own coach when the ball's in front of you. Down the line in left field, Bryce Harper knew exactly the arms that were on the relay. He knew where he was at the time. Took off the helmet and lets it's go time. Garrett high on a 2-2, now full 3-2. and two. Got criticized a lot about taking, running through the stop sign, but in that circumstance, you are the best coach. You are the best judge of that play. What was it Rob Thompson told us that when Bryce knocks his helmet off, it's like he turns invisible? <laughs> he thinks he turns invisible. Yes, that's it. <laughs> The old little league move. You see that little league. Kick that helmet off. Seven pitch coming. Harper gone. What a job. Third strikeout for Garrett. Similar to the Schwarber at bat. He now punches out Harper to start the second. 
four seam paint. See right there the grip and the spin and in the glove. Right on the edge. And if you're sitting slider or you're protecting slider lefty on lefty that pitch will get by you. Garrett has had great success on the road. Here's Rio Muto. Ball that's in. That one misses in. 285 ERA 15 road starts only Snell and Burns were better than that third best in baseball. There are the numbers just behind that 199 277 numbers. Now working ahead of the Philly catcher. That's a fair ball. Sanchez going over real Muto is heading to second and he will be there with a stand up double. They hit that ball hard 102.7 miles per hour just allowed the ball to travel in the zone. Farrell stayed through the zone didn't try to do too much. So with one out, Rio Muto moves into scoring position. And one of the better teams with runners in scoring position, the Phillies all year. Here's Nick Castellanos. And he sends this one sky high playable in the outfield. Chisholm is there to make the play. And we'll send it back to Nicole for an update. Well, over on ESPN2, the Brewers had a 2-0 lead until this happened. Diamondbacks on the board. Alec Thomas, 351 feet to right field. It is now 2-1. Brewers have the lead. We're on the top of the fifth. Bottom of the fifth now. Thanks, Nicole. Appreciate that. Minnesota Twins, congratulations. As they move on, and what an outstanding performance. Again, Carlos Correa in the middle of everything. They beat Toronto 2 0. Texas eliminates Tampa Bay 7 1. Now Stott. That's a good pitch. 0 and 1. From July 1 on, the Philadelphia Phillies hit 278 with runners in scoring position. They had an 839 OPS. Trying to do it with two down. Field the third strike. Jordan Baker is a third base umpire tonight. He was right. Excellent speed at second base, especially for a catcher, and Stott watches one go outside. about Braxton Garrett he had one major blow up game against Atlanta otherwise he would likely get some Cy Young consideration hey. perfect pitch hey. Kate there as Cody had said and he has brought his brush tonight is fourth strikeout through two innings and he leaves real Muto at second once again the difference between a four seamer and a two seamer he's got both of them working Little two seamer runs back to the outside corner. That works. Rangers beat the Rays, and the Twins take care of the Blue Jays. Both those series end up in sweeps, and now it's the Orioles. And you can see game one will be Saturday in Baltimore at 1 Eastern time. Meantime, our schedule tomorrow, if there are two games, we'll be on at 3, and then here in Philadelphia at 7. If there's only one game, It'll be at 7 o'clock Eastern time. A doubleheader possibility tomorrow at 3 and 7. Single game at 7. Ball, oh, that's off. Milwaukee score stays 2 1, bottom 5 over on ESPN 2. 7 8 9. Sanchez, Birdie, Stallings do up for Miami. Ball. Nolan misses there, so he falls behind 2 0 here to start the third. Some guys just show up in October, right? Yeah. Nasty Nate. Nathan Avaldi shows up at postseason. He was great. Correa. Carlos Correa shows up in postseason. 
So that being said, is there a truth to when people say, well, they're playing bored in the middle of June, July, they're just bored. They'll pick it up later on as the season goes. And this one to left. And Pache is under it. And there's one down. I don't think there's an analytic for that boredom or, or clutch gene, right? You keep hearing that, but you, you suggesting that there are guys that seem to rise a little bit in Ottawa. Yeah, there's just, it's a heartbeat thing out there. Watch Nola out on the mound. His heartbeat's very much under control. He's been there, done that. Really impressed with Braxton Garrett so far in his first test of the big stage, controlling his heartbeat. What Wheeler did last night was get ahead, seemingly of everybody. Nola has not had that success so far tonight, but there's a first pitch strike to Birdie. So now four of eight first pitch strikes. Birdie has decent numbers against the righty, four for 13. He's got a home run. Not a good night last night, 0 for 3, 3 Ks. Nola stays away. Nine years with the Philadelphia Phillies, Aaron Nola. And Birdie hits this one hard. Pache is going over, and he has it off his glove. Birdie to second. He will stand there. Pache had it, and it went off the glove. A double for Birdie with one out. And if you ask him if he should have made that play, he'll say 100% I should have made that play. And the reason being was the jump he had. And left field, watch a couple steps he takes here. Has to change direction. That change of direction right there did not allow him to get to the ball in a quicker route. It's right off the end of the glove. He'll look back at that one and just think, what if I would have, the first five steps, had a better route? Now the nine hitter, Stallings. Corner for Nola. The batting champ Arise is on deck, a terrific contact hitter. Doesn't strike out very often. Ball. Oh. That one just missed location so badly, even though it was in K zone. Kind of removed Edding's responsibility from saying that's a strike because he missed so bad. Exactly. Riyamuto had to reach all the way over. One on one to Stallings. And this one is down the line and it's going to get into the seats. There's Kevin Stallings, for basketball coach at a variety of schools. Jacob's dad. Those two, when Kevin was coaching at Vanderbilt, Jacob often spent time there. They play catch in the gym. He's found a home here in Miami. He's been really good. We're now trying to come through here to get the Marlins on the board in the third. Good take. Little old school choke up. For two strikes. Put the ball in play. Any which way. Three balls, two strikes, and he missed by a lot with that 93 mile an hour fastball. I come in a couple steps and right, just trying to punch it. Three two, they get him picked. A big mistake there by Birdie. Wow. And let me tell you why it's a big mistake. When you have Luis Arise on deck, a singles machine, doesn't matter what Stallings does right here. 
You're already in scoring position. Now you get the crowd right back into this. Advantage Phillies. Nola just baited him right into that. 3-2. And a high chopper. Bohm will get it before it hits, and he will throw him out. Well, did that inning turn arise? Had a chance to come up even with two outs, and that went off the board when Birdie got caught. Nola escapes. Bottom three coming up, 0 0. Well, you watch a veteran pitcher and he sees Birdie dancing. Okay, leg up, leg right back down. Bates him into that play. Very good play by Nola to read it and then get it. Start at the bottom of the third, 8 9 1. Pache, Rojas, and then back to Schwarber at the top. Guys, you had Luis Arise on deck. Mm hmm. How clutch has Luis Arise been this year with runners in scoring position, two outs, 463. Yeah, big blowing opportunity right there. We'll get you an update on the Arizona game in just a second. You can see they've taken the lead in the upper right hand part of our screen. 3 2. We'll show you, Nicole, with how they did that. Pache and Rojas each had an RBI last night. Ball. That one also missed location. Now it's two balls and a strike. on him he doesn't feel like all of a sudden I'm panicking he has been able to navigate through that and it seems like each time whether it was Schwarber he did the same thing to Stott not there though he walks Christian Pache to lead it off we'll go back to Nicole well, I really wanted to show you the results of the sausage race but since you said I would show you the lead change here we go sixth inning how the ties have turned Cattell Marte to right the throw from Freelich I mean, it was also Corbin Carroll he was chasing down, and he's a little fast. Diamondbacks with the lead. It is 3 2, top of the sixth. All right, the sausage race, maybe next time. Johan Rojas, the center fielder. And over 300 average this year, squared the bunt. That misses down, ball one. Okay, this is really cool, and this is because we had a conversation with Rob Thompson about this situation right here. The last game of the season, Rojas was asked to bunt not once, not twice, but three times during the game, and it's to prepare him for the postseason. Put it in the back of his mind and make sure he's game ready for these moments. Hey! One didn't offer there to bunt. And so much of what the Philadelphia Phillies did late in the year was to prepare for October. There was a Resignation that they weren't going to catch the Braves who have been a juggernaut since jump. But how do we best prepare ourselves for October? Missed inside. The pitching. Things like Rojas. Getting bullpen more comfortable with their roles. Defense is night and day, especially outfield defense. This one is popped sky high. Bell comes over, so does Stallings to give it a look, but it's three rows deep. Yeah, which is why long term it feels like Harper's going to end up at first base. And certainly Bryson Stott moving over from shortstop to second has helped the defense up the middle immensely. He's a he's a Gold Glove candidate at second base. Filthy pitch and Rojas retired. Five punch outs now for Braxton Garrett. 
Well, it's his best finish pitch, is that, that slider. We talked about the depth that he gets on it. Perfectly located down and in. Rojas is a free swinger. He's not looking to walk. Yep. So you can expand the zone. Well executed there. And Braxton Garrett. Schwarber. Ball, oh, no, no. Checks there. 47 home runs for Kyle Schwarber. And 126 runs batted in. Saw three sinkers, two fastballs, and a slider in his last at bat for the strikeout. He's seen everything already from Garrett. the reaction of the hitter there Schwarber like he missed one huh how frustrating is it Eddie and, and was that an indication Schwarber thought that was a pitch he should have made a lot better contact with absolutely should have made a little bit better contact with and he's been pitched up and away the first time a couple of different kinds of fastballs sinkers and four seamers keeping them off balance this time everything's down Ripped. It hugs the wall. Now Sanchez has to chase it. Flying around is Pache from first. Schwarber breaks on. His double makes it 1 0 Philadelphia. Second time around the order. This is a curiosity. Can and will the Phillies make an adjustment? And will Garrett make an adjust adjustment? First time around against Schwarber, everything was up. This time, this ball stays middle in. He keeps it fair right past Bell. And in that corner with the speed of Pache, no chance for Jesus Sanchez to be able to get that man across the home plate. That ball may have gone off of Bell's glove, and in a game of inches, had it hit the side wall instead of going all the way to the corner, Pache may not have been able to score. It's a great point. It was hit over 111 miles an hour, so that's why they got by Bell so quickly. Mel Stottlemyre Jr. out to just kind of calm things down because the decibel level here at Citizens Bank has gone up dramatically. I love the fact also that Rob Thompson took away the butt sign from Rojas. Even though he struck out, Bell has to stay at first base to hold the runner. Bell's behind the runner with a runner at second base. He will be guarding the line. That ball's probably caught. One nothing Philadelphia. Trey Turner with one down. Swings at the first one, and it was way inside. Change up and now 0 and 2 to Turner. Right back up the middle. That one goes off of Garrett into right field. Here comes Schwarber. It's 2 0 Philadelphia and RBI for Turner. That ball was hit 96.1 mile an hour right back at Garrett. It was a two strike. Pitch, and you can see he points to his backside. He's frustrated, understandably so, and then just out of the reach of a rise. Boy, another look, and you can see he just knocks the glove off of him. He takes it off the backside or off his hip. The ricochet finds the outfield grass. And a rise was positioned perfectly, too. It doesn't hit him, it's right at Luis. Now you have some serious speed at first. 
on the Miami side, Schumacher's got to get the bullpen going right here. And he has Dave Robertson up. Here's Alec Bohm. Robertson. It was really terrific with the mess, and since coming to Miami, he hasn't been able to find it at all. It was a closer, and that didn't last very long. But he's getting loose. Can go back to the top when Birdie was at second base. Arrives on deck. He gets caught stealing, and then the ball off of Bell's glove, and then another one off the back of the pitcher. Game of inches. Two nothing. Two and one, and they will throw over to first base. A different animal in the era of the pitch clock to try to get a bullpen warmed up quick enough. Yes. Especially in a tight elimination game. Turner goes. Got a good jump. Ball hits it hard to Birdie. He throws it and Bell is able to hold the bag. Turner into scoring position. They will be aggressive. Right now, Skip Schumacher has to be thinking about Dave Robertson in the bullpen to be ready for JT Realmuto if his at bat comes up this inning. You focus on Harper right here. Do your job. There's no tomorrow for the Marlins if they don't win. Turner's steal or would be steal took the double play Cut. off because that was a rocket from Bohm. Yeah, 103 plus miles an hour off of Bohm's bat. Another 0 2 pitch. We talked a lot about this young pitcher's first try in a big game in a big spot. It's also Schumacher's first try managing mm -hmm. a game like this. Ball, it's down. This will be the 25th pitch of this inning. Robertson's ready. Sure is. One two to Harper. Two and two now. I'll tell you what, I know there's a runner at second, but Jazz Chisholm Jr. in center field is playing a very shallow yep. center field. With Bryce Harper at the plate. He shaded to left. Harper coming off one of the more magical postseasons ever last year. Three and two now. Five straight sliders. The first two he swung through. The next three he took. Is sky high. Bell coming over. Will have room. Backs up to make the play. And Harper is out. Started in the top when they picked off Birdie. And then they started to score their own runs. Pache comes in. Schwarber with an RBI. Turner with an RBI. 
They keep it going and get it. More leather coming right up, pound for pound. This is the best baseball you've ever seen. In the postseason, it's even better. Back here at Philadelphia with Marlins manager Skip Schumacher. We saw a couple runs that inning. What are your plans with the bullpen moving forward? Yeah, I think we're going to go to him right away. Uh, you know, Brax was uh, pretty good the first couple innings. Got to him uh, kind of the second time around, and uh, probably go to our bullpen here pretty soon. Top of third inning, Birdie gets picked off. What was your read on that play? Birdie led the league in stolen bases last year, and uh, we trust him. He's on his own. Uh, good inside move by Nola right there, and, and uh, made us pay. Skip, thanks. Thank you. Back to you. Thank you very much, Buster. So Luis Arise, who was standing there with the bat in his hands, with one out, saw Birdie get picked. He came so close to getting a chance to not get a run, and now he leads off with his team down two zip in the fourth for Nola. Strike Cut! one. Wow. Luis knows that's a ball. There's someone here that knows the strike zone really well. It's Luis Arise. It's a really good bad ball hitter, but right there, it should be 1 0 instead of 1. Ball, that's all. His back to ball skills invoke a lot of thoughts, comparisons, <laughs> win, Ichiro. Rod Carew is another guy. You want to go back in the time capsule? Learned a lot from Carew, of course. Yep. You can see there that ankle, man. He, he, he landed on that ankle awkwardly, and it, it has stung him a lot in game one and seemed to do it again there. He tweaked it. Uh, I don't think there's anyone taking him out of this game. No. Watch this right here. I mean, this guy is playing with all heart right now. On a lot of bottom half, it's all about the hands for him. One, two, rolls it over. He's running as hard as he can, but Nola's going to beat him there by about five feet. Yesterday about the ankle, he says, I have all off season to get it healed. Yep. But right now, it's about playing through pain. He and DJ LeMayhew, the only two modern day batting titles in both leagues. That ball is hammered to left field, but it's going to stay in the yard. And Pache, he makes it clear he's under it to make the play. There are two down. Nicole. Getting a little wild in Milwaukee. The Diamondbacks have put up another run on a wild pitch by Uribe. So that whole sequence of events is going to move. Forward. And then Lourdes Goriel going to bring him in with an RBI single to left. It is 5 2, top of the six, and Milner is now out on the mound for the Brewers. Thanks, Nicole, for the update. 5 2 there. The Yuli Gurriel at bat last night, one of the bigger at bats in this game. As Nola throws to Bell, it's ball one. Alvarado and Gurriel late in that game last night, and Alvarado out of the bullpen got the job done. Hey. One ball, one strike. Tony Wheeler was incredibly efficient and here you have Nola now 44 pitches two outs in the fourth looking for a shutdown inning right here momentum clearly on the Philly side scored two in the bottom half looking for a goose egg here in the top of the fourth on the ground a second and Stott eats that up and Bell is out Nola used only eight pitches after his team gave him a two run lead to get through that. Bottom four coming up at Citizens Bank. The Phillies up by a couple. Philadelphia with Phillies manager Rob Thompson. Big pickoff from Aaron Nola. What's yeah. the backstory behind that play? Well, uh, in the last, I don't know, two, three weeks, we've been working on it. We've been working on bunt plays and a lot of defense preparing for the playoffs. Bobby Dickerson and Caleb have both been heading that up and they've been doing a good job. First time through the lineup versus second time through the lineup for you against the Marlins pitcher. Yeah, we got a lot better at bats the second time through. Uh, you know, we, we got some runs the last inning with Pache with a big leadoff walk, Schwarber double, Trey, it's a bullet up the middle. So 
We just got to keep it going. They got a new pitcher now, Robertson's in, so we'll have to worry about him. Rob, thanks. Back to you. God, Buster. Yeah, that's true. Monday during their workout, they spent 45 to an hour on defending bunt plays, being aware of the pickoff moves against the Marlins that might run. And it paid off there as David Robertson, the veteran, steps in and fires one right there past JT William Muto. Five miles an hour from Robertson. I'll say this Rob Thompson, speaking from experience, is one of the most buttoned down managers in the game right now. All the fundamentals, all the preparation, really paying off here in this series. All right. We've seen base running, we've seen defense, we've seen pitchers that were rested by design, paying off dividends between Wheeler last night, Nola so far tonight. I had that guy in spring training for the Yankees several years in a row and nobody ran a better spring training than him. He is on top of that. Whatever that is. No, he's not a he's not pounding his chest. He's not letting you know that he that he has that information. That's his secret sauce. He's as buttoned down as anybody in the game but yet at the same time very level and even even keeled at the same time. Muto doubled his first time up. He swings at bat against his former battery mate Robertson. He's 0 for 4 in his career against him. Make a heck of a poker player, wouldn't he? Yes. He really would. See yourself leaving with nothing in the wallet. Paul, oh, good take there. Phillies have doubled them. You know, we haven't seen the homer, but the double six of them between last night and tonight. That ball is drilled and forget it. A bat dropped by Real Muto. Three nothing Philadelphia. A no doubt about it shot. For JT. And the Philly fans get to celebrate their first home run of the postseason, and it comes with JT Real Muto. But you have to go back to that double that he hit down the line in right field, allowing the ball to get deep, seeing the ball real well. All of a sudden now he feels comfortable. He knows he can cover outside, and he's quick enough to cover the inside part of the plate. You get this guy going. This is a dangerous team. Castellanos actually has numbers against Robertson. Four for 13 with two homers. Hey! Throws him a knuckle curve in there for a strike. Now there were a couple of guys that needed their names circled that they knew if we were going to go deep, they had to perform. And Real Muto was one of them. Bit of a spotty September offensively for him. But again, a couple of hits in three of his last five games and two tonight after a one for four game in game one. <laughs> On the corner right there, Castellanos takes the bat and he will go back to the dugout. Take a look here at JT Realmuto. He sees the pitch, a little cutter. Sees it the entire way, and that's exactly what he was telling Christian Pache in the dugout. As soon as he hit it, he knew it. He uses the index finger to point at his team. Puts another run on the board. Came in at 94, left at 110. Yeah, traveled 404, and this one is fouled down the line off the bat of Stott. Saw that offensive number 220 homers during the regular season third most in baseball behind Atlanta. You know they're a million and then the Dodgers six different players had at least 20 homers. Including JT who had 20. Ball it's down. Just missed down Robertson wanted it.
Three nothing Philadelphia. They win. They move on to face the Braves. talked with Skip Schumacher about Tanner Scott who is just a weapon out of their bullpen and it wasn't a question of if it was when he was going to get him in because he didn't want to lose the series without having arguably his best bullpen arm never get in the game the question is at three nothing like when is that time as soon as Schwarber comes up if you're down three nothing and Schwarber is that if it's the bottom of the fifth inning, you bring him in. And I'll let this game get further away from you. And again, the Marlins' story this year have been come from behind wins, trailing by three runs as late as the sixth inning. And then they win one run games. Big swing from Christian Pache. Robertson after that shot from Rio Muto has looked like a different pitcher striking out Castellanos and Stott here 0 and 2 now to Pache. Three in a row, but there was some loud, loud noise off the bat of JT Real Muto. Well, he used to catch him here in Philly. And now he sees cutters and he hits them deep. And that's the face of a pitcher that just got got. Three nothing fills. Want to talk postseason ball with a friend? Just tell Siri, FaceTime Parker. Postseason continues. We are going to get down to the division series. They all start Saturday. Fox FS1, the American League. Orioles hosting the Rangers. Twins go to Houston. TBS, the National League. Braves and the Dodgers waiting the wild card winners. Here's Nola in a game that has some similarities to last night. The Phillies led three zip after four. Wheeler was being really effective. Nola is being very effective. And instead of taking the crowd out of it, the crowd stays very engaged. Ball to Chisholm. The division series, all four start on Saturday, and then the American League plays Sunday. The National League is off. I know this for Philadelphia Phillies fans. Many of them are looking ahead, not wise to do against the Marlins given their ability to come back. But those off days in the division series allows them to have arrested Zach Wheeler in perhaps two of the five if it goes five games. One and two to Chisholm on the way from Nola. Punches him out, caught looking. Wow. Yeah, he has a right to shake, shake his head. I mean, you're a Marlin or a Philly fan. You're looking at this one and obviously different emotions, but he missed that one big time. You give Jazz Chisholm a lot of credit because that ball wasn't close as Berger swings at the first one. And one of the things that Schumacher said he and his staff worked on, or at least spoke to the hitters about, was not letting one pitch. Now, when it's strike three, it's a little different, yeah. but not letting one pitch ruin the at bat. That pitch ruined the at bat. Yeah, and, and he just grabbed an iPad right now, and he's going to look at it. 
And once he sees where that pitch is, the facial expression is going to be even worse. I used to get that pitch all the time in 1992. That's right. This is 2023. <laughs> Berger up the middle. That's a single. We love this house. It really has it all. Yeah, but a neighbor is a little opinionated. At least Geico makes it easy to bundle our home and car insurance. Strike three! You're out of here! Dude, this is a great shirt. For bundling made easy, go to geico.com. De La Cruz next up. Marlins, Tony Eduardo, and it feels like they kind of get something going. You know, prior to that, Nola, because Birdie was picked, had faced the minimum. Now Berger on. Well, this is sort of the theory of, you know what? You got it's hard to string together hits against a pitcher like Nola. You yep. need a big swing. I want to talk about the theory of offenses in postseason play. What plays or not? You need more contact. You need less strikeouts. You know what you need? You need homers. Yeah. But I'll tell you this: the first time you ever run our first base, the first time he's in this situation, did pick off Birdie at second. Two and one. See the pace of Aaron Nola slow down a little bit. And just to back up your point, as you see Chisholm looking at the iPad. Little history lesson from 2022. Teams that out homered the opponents in the postseason went 22 and 6. Yes. Ball, that's all. That's a good take. Now, three balls and one strike to Brian De La Cruz. 19 homers, 70 plus RBI on the season. One swing can get him right back into the game. And that one came right over the heart of the plate. to the plate after the walk to De La Cruz. It's a great take right there. They're going all out. You get a curveball 3 2. That's not even the tying run. Now the tying run comes to the plate, but you're going after the chase instead of the strike. De La Cruz has had some really good takes in this game. Cody you talked about the home run ball being such a weapon and they've certainly added the home run threat with Bell and Berger but the philosophy of the team is kind of rooted in moving runners contact patience at the plate aggressive on the base pass they don't hit the ball over the wall nearly as often as the teams that that are at the top of the ladder when it comes to homers they they don't do that. Which in a format like this makes it a little more difficult. It does, especially against a, a pitch maker on the mound, a guy who is hard to bunch together hits against. And when you're down three to nothing, it makes it even more important that one big swing right here yep. can make a big difference. Their best chance so far tonight against Nola here in the fifth, trailing three zip, two men on for Jesus Sanchez. Gets the call. Sanchez is very vocal about that one. He should be. Timeout. And this is a good timeout for him. A lot of hitters wait for the second strike. He needs to regroup right here because this kid put on a show today in batting practice, both to left field and to right field. 
He's got the power, but he has to settle down. I like the time right there. This is the composure conversation because that was another ball that was not a strike that was called a strike by Eddings. See what it does it not only gets your focus out it starts making you chase pitches out of the zone and not trusting the man in black behind you plus you have to compete with the pitcher on the mound. That's double trouble. Oh and two. And a double play ball. Turner takes it himself. And that will end the inning and the threat. Nola gets the ground ball he needs and is having one of his best outings of the season. Three nothing Philadelphia bottom five coming up. Postseason gets the best 5G coverage in the game with T-Mobile, America's largest and fastest 5G network. With Eduardo Perez, David Cohen, Buster only up Carl Ravage. Robertson on again, stays in, deals with Rojas, who slaps one to third. Good play by Berger to his left. And quickly, there's one down. You understood the frustration from Sanchez there in that last at bat with that first pitch that was egregiously called a strike, and then he did take that breath, but the double play ended the inning. You guys have made the point when you have a guy who is as good as somebody like Nola, then gets the benefit of the doubt. And I'm not saying it's just exclusive to Nola tonight, but if he's getting that call, flashing back to Levon Hernandez, that type of strike. Wow, Eric Gregg, way there, Greg. Yeah. I don't think we're there yet, but <laughs> nonetheless, it does kind of cry out for a sort of a, a hybrid challenge system moving forward into the future when we're going to see that. Maybe not full robo arms, but maybe a, maybe a hybrid. Ball. Well, the calls to Chisholm and certainly to that one to Sanchez were not strikes. There's certain points in the game where a hitter could have the opportunity to challenge a call, yeah. especially on a call third strike. Ball, one strike to Schwarber now. Struck out, doubled, and an RBI in the third inning in which they scored a couple. Kason said, uh, no, that would have been a ball, too. Didn't get any of it. You know, but as a hitter, what are the adjustments you have to make? You know the strike zone isn't the K zone. It's not the traditional strike zone tonight. Well, the first thing you have to do is not take it personal. Because that's what the hitters do at the beginning. They're like, okay, what does he have against me? Then what does he have against the team? And it's none of that. It's that he's been consistently missing them out of the zone. And oh, no, with no, the no, stuff no. that Nola has so far tonight, he has been able to control the strike zone outside of the rectangle area, making it appear like a strike, fooling the hitter, and also fooling Doug Eddings behind the plate. Schwarber tried to check that. He went. That is a strike. And Robertson ready on a 2-2. Strikes out Kyle Schwarber. Schwarber's second punch out tonight. Robertson's got four strikeouts. You can customize your feed, get personalized stats and highlights. Enjoy free live streams with the MLB app. If you're home for postseason baseball, download the MLB app today. Here is Turner, single and an RBI his last time up. Swings at the first one and misses. Three wild card games that Turner has been a part of in his career. He came in hitting 455. And one for two tonight. Six for 13 in wild card games. Watch out. Young hitter watching Turner in the box, Eduardo, and to your to your expertise on hitting. I mean, he's so relaxed with his hands. 
tension such a killer. Watch his hands and his fingers kind of moving on the bat. There's no tension there at all. Shallow right field. Sanchez there to make the play to retire Turner. Robertson gets through that one, uses just 10 pitches. He's got a smile on his face. They need some runs. Equaled by Aaron Nola. Two guys that if they're going to have a chance to win the World Series, they need them both. And so far, the poll says we are right where we need to be. 3-0, top of the six. Nola continues to pitch. That one missed badly inside. Over on ESPN2, Arizona leading Milwaukee 5-2. There is a chance that there are no game threes. There was one last year. There may be none this year. So I'm going to miss that two seamer working. Birdie followed by Jacob Stallings and then back to a rise at the top. That drilled him and Nola lost control. Birdie will be on base again. And he is a threat to run. Well, just a zoom ball, two seamer that gets away. Right in the hip bone. The leather protecting it with the belt. You know what? You need runs, you need base runners before you can get the runs. Jose Alvarado here in the sixth inning warming up in the Phillies bullpen. He was terrific last night. Birdie has reached base twice and here's Stallings. It's a head strike one. There is Jose Alvarado. During the regular season, the Marlins lost game one of three game series 31 times. They were 10 games below in the game ones. But then they had a terrific Time. record the rest of the way. They went 59 and 43 in games two and three. Speaking to this series, they lose game one. If they can turn that around like they did during the regular season, they'd move on to a division series. play to get out of the last inning. It was an unassisted play by Turner. Stallings is a double play candidate. Because of all the contact that they make, they do tend to heat into double plays. Most of the major leagues this year. as Nola has been cruising and as much as his pitch count is under control with the lineup ready to turn over for the third time yep. a lefty at the top that's why Alvarado has plenty of time to get ready here so once again Rob Thompson all over 2 2 birdie not going and here is another double play ball Turner flips stop double play Every time he's needed it, he's made the pitch and he's counted on that defense to make the plays. Heck of an execution, even at 100.3 miles per hour off the bat. He's got the Babbitt gods on his side, too, on that one. And again, you know, the rule changes second base. You saw how calm. Stott was at second base. Never any concern as this ball is lifted deep to right. Castellanos is there. One pitch to retire a rise. Nola gets through six. That was a nine pitch inning for Nola. 
go to the bottom half of the sixth. Philly's up. The NHL season returns with an opening night triple header. Hockey is, is back. back. How are you feeling about your first game? Super excited. Pretty cool to face off against you. It's an opening night triple header on ESPN and ESPN+. Plus. Predators Lightning get things rolling at 5.30 Eastern time as one sport kind of winds itself down. Another one starts to fire itself up. 3-0, bottom six. Phillies win. They move on for a series against the Atlanta Braves. The Marlins keep Robertson on the mound. Here in the bottom of the six, and it's going to be Alec Bohm to lead things off, followed by Harper and Real Muto. And Aranola has needed a double play ball in the last two innings. He's gotten two of them. And already warming in that Miami pen. And again, you do have that Tanner Scott question kind of looming out there. Spin her way off to Bone. After the home run to Real Muto, he struck three out. And he has retired six in a row. That is good knuckle curve, too, throwing a lot of them. One, two, Bohm rips that one. That's going to get to the wall. Bohm is going to hit first and head to second. And he will get there with another Philadelphia Philly double in this series. This was more of a slider as opposed to that knuckle curve, and this one sits. When sliders don't slide, they take a seat. And Baum has it from there. But the recognition of Baum right there, as soon as he saw it, just stayed strong with his bottom half. And really impressed with the way he continues to have that barrel through the zone. Robertson is out. Seven doubles for the Philadelphia Phillies in two games. Nardi in. Nobody out. The runner at second. Nardi in and Harper coming to the plate. Set the world on fire with his 2022 postseason. But he had six homers. And two thirds of those gave his team a lead. And they got a lead now, 3 0. There is nobody out. Bowen is at second. Richard Nardi misses away. See that strikeout rate really jumps out off the page in those 57 in the third innings. Also left-handed batters, a 158 average against him this year. Eight and one record of the season for him, and you saw the number of games that he's appeared in. Lefty hit just a buck 58 against him. Righty's 244. Zone strike at 95. It's always been Bryce's Achilles heel up and away. Three balls. Two balls, I should say. Two and two. No, three and one. And Harper has walked twice against Nardi. Discipline of Harper has continued to grow to more mature with each passing year. Ball four. Late off that, he'll take the walk. Just missed above the zone. And here comes Real Muto, who's having a night with a double and a no doubt about it, homer to left. Already wanted that pitch. A zone says it shaved the top. to real Muto. He swings and drives this one down the line, but it's going to go foul. Our act 
active play of the game. It's brought to you by Wells Fargo Active Cash Credit Card. This was money from JT Rio Muto. It's really good balance right there, and that's one thing that he's had the entire night is balance. To right field, the home run right there, even on the foul ball. They throw behind Harper. Safe, close play. Josh Bell looks to his dugout and says, you may want to look at that. Love the play, the back pick. You're in a jam, trying to steal an out. And Schumacher's got word to take a look at it. He's in there. Either way, it's a good time, though, to ask. You have 15 seconds to be able to ask for a replay. Gets that foot in right before the tag. While we're in the review, over on ESPN2, the Diamondbacks Brewers game, Milwaukee up with the bases loaded, trailing 5 to 2. It looked like that foot slammed the bag before Bell was able to get a glove on him. We take a look at the replay review. It's powered by Zoom. Lower right is really the point of emphasis for the officials there that are watching these reviews. The umpires will take as many looks as they can given the camera angles. You can hear the crowd here. They're making their call themselves saying safe. Need to go to New York. They, they're showing it up here on the big screen, and now the umpires in the stadium say he's safe. Might be a conflict of interest, though, Carl. <laughs> <laughs> the Brewers, with the bases loaded, do not score, and it stays 5 2 in favor of Arizona. Those of you that flipped over there know that. Now you're back here, and we're still in the review. Five thousand seven hundred and thirty eight umpires dressing red here at their call confirmed they they were on it. It's a real Muto and Harper and Bohm involved in the play right now. Nobody out. Sky high on the infield for an infield fly rule which will retire real Muto. Outfield continues to play very shallow, both in center field and in right field in particular, with Sanchez and Chisholm. Castellanos on the ground, a third burger has it go off of his arm and does not throw it. An error on Jake Berger to load the bases. He got flat footed. Got to a spot in a hurry, but he stayed flat footed at third base instead of using his legs. Watch this, he gets a good jump on it. Sees it and then right there just puts that head down. And this is where we see this all the time in Atlanta. And I'm going to use Ron Washington as a as a good chip here. This is where you have to attack the ball with that glove towards the baseball. You can't let it come to you. You have to be the aggressor. And because of it, the ball beats him and eats him up right on the heel. Bring up Bryson Stott. To not give the Phillies extra outs. You got the bases loaded. One out. Nardi's faced the minimum, and yet nobody warming up in the Marlins bullpen. As this season is on the brink. Bohm, Harper, Castellanos, the base runners. Infielders in at the corners and Stott drives one to right. That's deep. That is gone. A grand slam for Stott. The 
The brink just broke thanks to Bryson Stott's base clearing granny. The kid that last year struggled to hit the fastball. Went into the offseason, worked on the velo, worked on his approach. Sees the first 95 mile per hour pitch that Andrew Nardi throws to him and gifts the Philly fan base a seven run lead. Bryson Stott has talked about playing on this team and how there are no clicks and everyone plays for each other. And he has endeared himself to Philadelphia and to this clubhouse. Of course, he and Harper from Las Vegas knew each other, very different ages. But what an opportunity for Stott, and he delivered the biggest blow of his career, a grand slam to make it 7-0. on the ground and birdie I throw Bell got him on the arm watch where this fastball is right here he's looking for it right down the middle man try to throw a little bit middle away instead it's middle in and Bryson Stott had nightmares about what he witnessed in Houston last year. Fastball after fastball, he said, nah, -uh. eso no va a pasar de nuevo. That's not happening again. Now he had a Reese Hoskins quasi slam of the bat, and that ball flew over the wall in right field. It was the second ever Phillies postseason grand slam. The flying Hawaiian Shane Victorino had the other. Mr. Waffen has to get out of the way of that shot. Base is loaded. Hunting to first pitch fastball. Pretty smart. And he got it. And he knew it. And to your point, and it's a good one, Eduardo. I mean, this was a kid that got hammered by fastballs last year. He made the adjustment watching everything, Buster. How'd that feel? Great. Wow. <laughs> um, yeah, not a not a lot of thoughts really running the bases. It was kind of just a, a blackout, but it's pretty cool. How about all the work you put in last off season? You get to high fastballs, then you have that moment. Yeah, I mean, glad to see it's paying off. Thanks and thanks. Carl, back to you. Out of breath, understandably so. He floated around the bases. As he delivers the biggest homer of this postseason so far. Hoskins to Stott. Slam dunk. 7-0 heading to the seventh. This loaded situation much different than the same situation in Milwaukee. Willie Adamas hard to second, but that is an out inning over, and the Brewers did not capitalize. It's still 5-2, bottom of the ninth. Yeah, that is an absolute uh, execution here by Stott and the inability of Adamas to get it done. Philly seven, Marlins nothing. Two hits allowed by Aaron Nola tonight. He's been helped by his defense, getting that ground ball when he needed it. Turner, an unassisted double play, went 6 3, and then he flipped it to Stott to pick up another big one. Oh, that's down. Just think how important defense is right there. Yeah. Nick Castellanos. Roll over to third base. I think it should be two instead. Base is loaded. Bryson Stott makes him pay with one more pitch. Well, again, that third inning where Birdie get caught going between second and third, and then the Phillies put a couple on to go up to zip. And then the ability of the Phillies to turn the double plays, and to your point, Berger's inability to do it. The little things have turned out to be huge difference makers tonight in a must win game for Miami. And it's seven to nothing, and your best reliever is down in the bullpen sitting there. Tanner Scott never got a chance to enter the game in a meaningful situation. 
One two to Solaire on the way from Nola. That one is going to squip foul down the line. Well, you know, it's still the seventh inning and anything can happen, but certainly you start to look forward to a Phillies Braves division series best of five. How appealing is that? That one in the left, that's going to get down in front of Pache, and Solaire is aboard. One more look at Bryson Stott's grand slam. I cannot help to just continue to look at the fans. Have they sat down tonight? I mean, now they finally have seven nothing. But during, while they are hitting, while they are putting the pressure, they have been a huge part of the energy in this building. Second baseman did 15 homers during the regular Ball. season. And I know Philly fans will tell you that two guys that have been the most valuable players, the most consistent players, are the second baseman and the third baseman. Bowman Stott on a team with all the superstars. Bell 91 right at the knees. Harper, Turner, they will not throw it back to Nola. Smart play it was going to be close. You don't want your pitcher fumbling to find the bag with his foot, risk some injury. And this is a part of the game where it's changed, right? Where the pitcher has to run over to first, but the clock has already started. 12 seconds till he delivers the pitch. The righty Jeff Hoffman, who pitched last night, now warming. Talked about Tanner Scott. You wondered if Orion Kirkland would get a chance in a seven-nothing game, get his get his playoff feet wet. September call-up. We watched his dad in tears watching his son play. It was it was an emotional moment and a great moment for the Kirkland family. And he's on the roster. Ball. Well, that's off. Well, as the sport moves forward, this is going to be a guy who is going to be at the forefront of it. Jazz Chisholm. With his abilities, with his personality, with his smile, with Miami getting better and better. And his new position of center field. He's very good out there. They just need him to stay healthy all season long. Yeah. Full season of Jazz Chisholm Jr. Could be a 40-40 candidate. Too low. But what if you're building the Marlins from this point forward? You look at the Phillies, you look at the Braves. What are some of the things Kim Ng and the Marlins need to do? They need to continue to focus on the development of the hitters at the minor league level. They have a lot of pitching. And that's what's going to keep them competitive. 3 2 in this one to center. And it's got some carry on it. Back at the wall, right at the wall. The catch is made by Rojas. He made that look easy. Plays a deep center field, so he's really good in those corners in right center and left center field. Just glides to it.
knows where he's at. Watch that right hand just feeling for the wall. Perfectly played. And Gary Maddox quality to the way that Rojas roams around out there. Gliding. Yeah, I've heard the comparison with Devon White, former yep, Blue sure. Jay. Great center fielder, just gliding. And always seems to get there at the right time. We've talked enough about the night that, that guy has had on the mound tonight. Nola's given up no runs. He's a strike away from going seven innings. This is the most pitches he's thrown in an inning. That's how dominant he has been able to be because of the double play ball. Hasn't been a huge strikeout night, but this would be his third straight terrific start. And two burger, boom, second inning over. Aaron Nola goes through seven shutout innings. Meantime, as we go to break, the tying run at the plate for Milwaukee, and Christian Yelich has just made this game a little bit closer. Well done tonight. He was flat out outstanding, and he got all the offensive support he needed early in this game when Rio Muto went yard. They had themselves a 3 0 lead, and then with the bases jammed, Bryson Stott jumped one over the wall in right. A grand slam to join Shane Victorino as the only Phillies to do that in the postseason. It's seven nothing Philadelphia. We'll quickly get an update on that Arizona Milwaukee game from Nicole then hear from Aaron Nola. Nicole. We started this day with four games to play. We are now down to one Christian Yelich doubled then the tying run at the plate for the Brewers and William Contreras. But no game over series over five two. congrats D backs. You now get the Dodgers on Saturday. Well, congratulations to Tori Lavolo. Schwarber up. Let's get it down to Buster. Aaron, what do you feel like he did well tonight? Uh, I feel like I filled his own up. Defense was great behind me. Uh, big double plays tonight, which helped out a lot, especially when the leadoff guy got on. Um, but for the most part, got ahead of the guys. Um, felt like first pitch strike was there for the most part. Uh, but try to make pitches as best as possible uh, when I needed to. Staff arranged a lot of rest for you guys in the last six weeks of the season. Tell me how different you feel this year compared to last year as the playoffs begin. I feel good physically. I feel good. Um, I know they uh, we brought a six man rotation in after the all-star break and wanted to give us more rest but uh, feel good. I feel like our staff our, our staff feels good uh, going into the postseason especially the wild card and I mean we still want to throw deep in the games to get these bullpen guys fresh keep them fresh uh, all postseason and hopefully we can make a good run. Aaron thanks call back to you God Buster terrific congratulations to Aaron Nola we appreciate Aaron Nola Bryson Stott doing interviews with us during the game we're taking a timeout Nardi's night is over there's one down in the bottom of the seventh and the only series still going this one right here Ground balls right and left combination of sinker change up knuckle curve served it well a couple of double plays one real timely pick off at second base and you look at this that tells the story change up knuckle curve sinker led the way and look at the location all of them down or all just off Statcast powered by Google Cloud 88 pitches 57 strikes for him and now JT Shargwa here with one out in the seventh. Turner fouls that one off. Well, as you guys mentioned, you know it's a it's a learning experience for all the young players. But to your point about Skip Schumacher being in this for the first time as well, Turner rips this one left center field. He's watching it. It's going back there, and it goes off the wall. Trey Turner. How about the Phillies eighth double in two games. 
Yeah, they slugged tonight. They've hit the home run, they've hit the double, and here's another double by Trey Turner. When he hits it, he's like, oh, just missed it. The big difference here is Gas Chisholm Jr. plays a very shallow center field and a flat-footed center field at that, and because of it, watch the jump and look where he's at. He's got a long ways to go right here. This ball just short hops the fence. A lot of outfielders are playing deep these days, and they're making sure that those plays are caught. That one gets away, and Turner will take third base. I'll tell you what, Turner's had himself quite a two games. He's got four hits, and now his 45th postseason game all time. Lousy double. Just a just a lousy <laughs> double. Ten extra base hits. The infield will come in. The ball. The Phillies have been terrific with runners in scoring position. And Bohm beats that one. Birdie cuts it off. And that will prevent Turner from coming in. America's number one sportsman. Turner picks up his 11th career postseason double. Go back to that 19 World Series he played, and he hit only 161. So he looks forward to getting back to a World Series and perhaps exercising some of those demons. I got to get one of those baby Crux shirts right there. <laughs> baby Crux. Please, like, please get me one of those. It's beautiful at Crocker. If there were a game three, I heard the Crocker was going to be back in town. Our longtime buddy. They intentionally walk Harper. So he goes down to first, and they decide to pitch to Real Muto, who's two for three with a double and a homer. Right on right, and Real Muto fouls that back. This one to left. It's not going to leave the yard. Dela Cruz under it for the third out. Eight doubles for the Phillies, two games. That is the most in a two game postseason span. They had nine back in 08. On a team Moyer pitched for. Together, 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 together. Postseason rolls on the division series just about set. We got one more to decide. It looks like the Phillies and Braves are going to meet up. American League Division Series, Fox and FS1, National League will be seen on TBS, and all four games will be seen on Saturday, October 7th, with the American League Division Series continuing on Sunday, the National League Series with the day off. What a story this is. Orion Kirkring. Three games in the regular season, called up in September. So impressed were the Phillies, they said we're going to keep him on the roster here in the postseason. He's got a 98 mile an hour fastball and a wipeout breaking pitch. And this year he pitched in Clearwater, Jersey Coast, Double A Reading, Triple A Lehigh Valley. There's that cut. He started out in Clearwater. He started out in Clearwater. He's got his first postseason out. Of course, the viral moment came when his dad, Todd, a retired Marine, who said after, I have seen a lot of great things, I've seen a lot of ugly things. And this moment was the best thing, among the best things that he'd ever seen. His son making his major league debut and getting a couple of big strikeouts. What a moment. And Orion Kirkring gets this soft landing coming into a game that his team leads seven nothing, and he Cut! is just throwing strikes. He is a strike throwing machine.
both he and Hoffman were not even on the radar coming out of training camp. That's what Thompson told us earlier. And look at that filth at 88 for a punch out in the postseason. You know it's coming, right? But it's the deception that it has. Pretty nasty. Oh, by the way, in his back pocket, he does also have like between 95 and 97. That's a 3,000 RPM buzzsaw, is what that is. <laughs> and there it is, 97. Thompson compared to remember when Java Chamberlain burst onto the scene that Kirkering could be that type of weapon for the Phillies. How can you not get excited about this? Birdie hits one to fairly deep center field, but Rojas makes it look easy. So did Orion Kirkring in his first postseason appearance. Nine pitch inning, eight strikes. It's a big old party here in Philadelphia. The bank remains open late, seven zip. The telecast is presented by authority of the Office of the Commissioner of Baseball and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form. And the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without express written consent. Tonight's game track is brought to you by Volvo. Wheeler got into the seventh. Nola threw the seventh. Three hits. One earned run between them both. 11 strikeouts. And uh, they're waiting to fill out that win in the lower right hand column. And here is the look at Tanner Scott. The outstanding lefty. The, the lefty version of Kirkring. He's just done it for longer this season. I mean his numbers are scary good. Castellanos out a little different than the energy we saw from Castellanos last night after he got into second base and he looked back at his dugout and he held up a finger. This is something that came out honestly like I didn't think about it but I mean that's why we're here that's what this game's about right this journey is to get that ring. Get that ring. And now here comes the Grand Slam kid, Bryson Scott. He got a huge ovation when he stepped in. Hunt! But virtually every metric by which Scott is measured, his fastball spin rate, like 99th percentile, his expected slugging, 99th percentile, strike rate, barrel rate, 98th percentile, every one of those clicks in the high 90 percentiles. His wife just had a baby boy, Bo Alexander Scott, 26 of September. He's figured out how to pound the strike zone. Point of emphasis for really every team, but certainly the Marlins this year. And his first pitch strike rate's gone up to just just shy of 70 percent. Don't really need to aim it for the corners when you throw a 99, right? Just let it fly. Nope, you don't. That's 99. Go ahead and see if you can hit it. Stotts had himself his moment already. And he's the second out here in the bottom of the eighth. What are you most looking forward to in a Braves Philly series? 
all the loud outs that are going to be hit there. You look at the the ability that both teams have impact leadoff guys. A lot of home runs combined between both. The ability to run the base as well, to field well, it's going to be a battle. And it's not only a battle on the field. The fans at Truist Park, just like the fans here at Citizens Bank Park, they show up. The atmosphere in Atlanta is amazing. That whole area, but boy, that ballpark and this ballpark, a little decibel reader on both, and they'll be off the charts. Rise fires to first. And Scott picks up his third out of the inning. Chance for the Phillies to end it with Stallings, Arias, and Solaire coming up. If can get three outs, will be an unbelievable division series. There will be no game threes. If the Phillies hold on and win this one, and they have obviously a commanding lead. But if you're Rob Thompson and you've been preparing to go deep into October, the first two games that you have received, check every single box. You know, you've accomplished what you've wanted to with your relievers, your two starters delivered the games they needed to. As Xavier Edwards is a pinch hitter against Gregory Soto. Boy. Scott stuff was as advertised and you wondered maybe pull the pull the trigger on him a little earlier in this game back up the middle and that's going to be a hit. So Xavier Edwards starts off this ninth inning with a single. Welcome to the postseason. Never forget that first at bat in the postseason. Xavier Edwards. Phillies offense in this series 11 runs on 18 hits and 10 extra base hits. Hey! Strike on the corner to Arise who's looking forward to getting that ankle into a recovery mode. And go for his third consecutive batting title next season. Ball ball. Swings at that one at 88 and misses it. You can see just how painful every swing is on that ankle. Carl, you talk about the potential of a Phillies Braves series. That'll be like Ollie versus Frazier in baseball. Yeah, it will. Like with the two lineups, two heavyweights. And a high chopper, Harper will take the out at first base. Max Freed threw in a simulated game today. They, they brought all the fans in to watch them play against each other. He went five innings, and apparently there was no issues at all. But certainly the Phillies are going into that series as healthy as they can be while the Braves have some questions and concerns and the blister on Freed's hand is a big one. Of course ESPN radio will have coverage of all the series as well for when you're at home in your car wherever you may have an opportunity to not be in front of the television and listen on the radio. There are home field advantages, and then there's Philadelphia. Different level of home field advantage here. Bell flips around, bats from the right side. Soto's first pitch, strike hey! one. In a 7 nothing game on a weeknight, not many people have left the ballpark either. They come early, they stay late. <laughs> 
So we don't have a game tomorrow. If Gregory Soto can pick up this out or any of say the next six guys to come up. No you probably won't. That's us. That's it for us. This, that's it. Do it. Get on the board here with two outs in the ninth. Bell delivers. Tell you what, he showed up. He grinded at bats, not afraid of anything in, and just continued to battle. Great pickup for the Marlins down the stretch. His fourth hit in this wild card series, and here's Chisholm now. Jazz is 0 for 7 with three strikeouts. And from the minute the Astros reported that last out and won the World Series, the Phillies were singularly focused on getting back to the World Series. Not having a good season, not necessarily making the postseason. Getting back to the World Series. Hey! And hey! step one of that process has been completed. The Phillies 7 1 win the wild card over the Marlins and now get to face the Braves. The entire downtown is lit up in red. Here, this stadium miles away. This team isn't built to just get in. This team is built to win. That's what Dave Dombrowski did from the get go. A $300 million investment in Trey Turner, at least through two games, certainly has, has paid off through the entire season. But again, that standing ovation that he received from this crowd. Talk about the ability of a fan base to influence a team. That was a seminal moment in this season. And Trey Turner has been a different player, and the Phillies have been a different team. And step one has been achieved. This looks like a team on a mission. Battle tested, back for more, and Atlanta waits. That's 100. It's going to be East in the National League against West in the National League. Yeah, Diamondbacks, Dodgers, Braves, Phillies. And Trey Turner in his first postseason in Philadelphia is loving every minute of what he's got surrounding him, including the Grand Slam guy, Bryson Stott. Because of the lefty, somebody like that who was so important last year, Marsh barely gets in. He'll play a big role against the Braves. And Atlanta with all their star power and Ronald Acuna and Riley and everyone else ready. Now the Marlins get a chance to see what this feels like. And their mission will be to get back here next year in this wild card, if not avoiding one and getting into a division series by winning a very tough league the NL East you can certainly stay tuned to Sports Center for a post game coverage of this one wrap up all four wild cards as they get swept but that will do it for our crew it has been a special year thanks to all of you that spent time with us on Sunday nights and a special thanks of course to my partners here in the booth Eduardo Perez David Cohn and Buster only and everybody behind the scenes. That's it. There's no more tomorrow. I don't want to go home. You don't want to go home. I want more.
We'll get plenty when we see you next season. Congratulations to all the winners in here in Philadelphia, the Phillies. For everyone involved with ESPN's baseball coverage, I proudly say thank you for watching. I'm Carl Ravitch. It's time now for Sports Center as the Phillies win the series. Thanks so much, Ravi. Great.